What is up, everybody? This is Zach Zacharias. We're back again with more of Avernum Escape from the Pit. We just got out of the caves we're in, so here we go with what with being in Fort Avernum. You emerge from the dark tunnels, and your claustrophobia is immediately replaced with vertigo. You are in a fort within a gigantic cavern. The stone ceiling arcs hundreds of feet over your head. As your eyesight adjusts, you look around at the world of Avernum for the first time. You are inside what looks like some sort of fort. It is made, it is made of huge blocks of stone, roughly mortared together. Wood must be rare down here. Only the doors are made up of it. There are a few odd trees nearby, more fungus and wood. Then when you're all at this strange sight faith, you notice the warriors. They stand around the lip of the pit you are in, weapons drawn. Some of them have bows pointed at you, ready to fire. As you prepare to defend yourself, a man comes running toward the lip of the pit from the south. Stop! Stop! He shouts. Don't fire! Let me talk! A small man runs toward you, waving his arms. Its skin is incredibly pale and the strange light from the fungal ceiling. When he reaches you, he stops and bends over, hands on his knees, breathing heavily. When he regains his breath, he says, Don't attack! I am Andrew, the greeter. We are Avernites. We are here to help, welcome and, he and help you. Why weren't you there when I arrived? There were difficulties. Not all who arrive are peaceful. One such thug stole a key and locked the gates to the arrival caves. We were preparing to break in and retake the tunnels when the gates opened from within. A thug named Lagrin just came out this way. Did you catch him? Andrew looks embarrassed. We tried. When he ran out, his face was covered. By the time we were sure he was a killer and not an innocent arrival, he had already fled. I was the one who defeated him. Andrew takes a step back and inspects you. You have the look of a warrior with some potential. It is good. With all the forces that threaten us, Avernum needs warriors like you. I'm sure he will be found. What happens to me? Well, your new life begins. Now that you have emerged, I have something to say to you. Yes. As Andrew speaks, the guards nearby watched solemnly. Each of them went through the same ceremony, the beginning of a new life. Andrew, Andrew says, On behalf of Avernum, I welcome you to your new home, here in the darkness. Our lot is hard, but we are free of the crushing hand of the Empire. We offer you peace and aid, as long as you aid us in return. He smiles weakly. That is all. We have some aid for you. Then you can go out and start your new life. Can I return to the surface? A common question. No, I would abandon any hope of ever seeing the sun again. The sooner you give up on that, the sooner you can begin to make a new life here. Alright, I will try to settle in. Andrew nods. I am pleased to hear it. Life here is hard, but it has its own rewards and moments of beauty. Help us and we will help you. Do you need anything else? You called yourself the greeter? It is my task. I wait for new arrivals such as yourselves and welcome them. He bows. Welcome to Avernum. Tell me more about Avernum. Avernum is what we call this place. Countless miles of tunnels, caverns, and icy subterranean rivers. It is your new home. He smiles sadly. Avernum? What does that word mean? In ancient times, Avernum was one of the names for the underworld. It was a place where souls were sent to be judged when their lives were over. Appropriate, yes. Why are you welcoming me? It's my job. I'm here to ease the considerable shock of being cast into the underworld. Of course. So, welcome to the underworld. He pauses to think. Also, I'm here to say where you can get information about Avernum and supplies. Andrew nods to you. Is there any other way I can help you settle in? He waits to see if you have any more questions. How can you help me? We can provide two things for you here. 
supplies, and information. Once you know where you can go and have a few points to get yourself established, we send you on your way. Information is always useful. Farrell is a town sage. He lives and works in the building just a little bit to the southwest. He's a bit glum, but he does his job well. He will answer your questions as best he can. Of course, you should get supplies first. I can get supplies? To prevent certain problems, new arrivals are sent to Tor to get modest supplies to support themselves until they find work. He's in the building to the south. We found him when otherwise results in desperate, dangerous, and violent new citizens. This way, you will have a fair chance. What you do with it when you leave here is you, your business. Can't I just stay here? That is a small. That is a common question. I am afraid not. This fort is small, and we already have all the defenders we need. The rest of Avernum needs you. There is an Avernite wander around the streets of the fort, looking for new arrivals. He wears a jerk and a thick lizard hide, and a bow of blackwood hangs from his shoulder. The moment he sees you, he almost rushes to greet you. Welcome to Avernum, he says. I am Varon. You look newly arrived, and if you don't mind me saying a bit aimless, I have an opportunity for you. What is this opportunity? The opportunity to fight for Avernum, so that we can all survive. And, in return, you can gain what little renown and comfort as is available in this dark place. Tell me more. He nods. A wise choice. You should go to Silvar, west of here, and meet the mayor. I have been sent to recruit people like you, and I think you will find the work to your liking. That is all. I will leave you to regain your bearings. He nods and walks off, looking for other potential recruits. Okay, we don't need to take anything here. There is a tall man sitting behind the counter, wearing bronze armor. Behind him is a large rack of crude stone and bronze weapons. He recognizes you as a new arrival in an instant. I don't recognize you, and I recognize everyone. You must be new. He rises and shakes your hand. You can see how desperately pale years down here I've made him. I am poor. I'm here to give you some supplies before you go on your way. Uh, where do you get the supplies you give out? Some are sent here by the army, others are sent by the Empire. Sometimes they give us weapons and food and other things. We find them in the rival caves with the new exiles. What do you do here? Well, sometimes I maintain the weapons of the guards, sometimes I guard travelers going to Silvar, but I spend most of my time giving supplies to newcomers. What is Silvar? Silvar is the closest town to the west, a very good place to find work if you need it. You should ask Thero about it. Its office is in the next building to the south. Do the weapons need lots of maintenance? He looks back at them with disdain. Pretty crude work, huh? Good metal is rare down here. Tools to work it, rarer still. Enchanted items? Good luck finding them. Magical items? They can be found? Sometimes. Some are made at the Tower of Magi. Also, when Avernum was first discovered, the Empire sent many explorers down here. A lot of them were killed, but their equipment remains. Such items are rare and valuable and precious, though. I wouldn't go hunting them. Better to live a peaceful life in one of the forts, I think. Thor sits behind the counter. He occasionally looks back at the large rack of crude weapons, checking his inventory. Any other way I can help you, or will you be moving on? Can I have some supplies? Four nods, make some notes on a scroll made of crude parchment, and hands you a pouch, some dried meat, and a loaf of unappealing, slightly gray bread. This is the starting allowance all new arrivals are given, to help them get established. We want you to become productive citizens of Vernum as soon as possible. Good luck to you. Okay, so we got 200 coins, and we got some meat and bread. Again, if you were playing like the original Vernum and, uh, Exile escape from the pit, then food would make more of a difference. But in this one, it doesn't really matter that much. But it is there to explain how the Avernites basically survive. And 
no, we're not going to get into the whole logic of how they survive in caves the way they do. It's one of those things you have to suspend your disbelief on. You see a slender, worried looking man wearing the robes of a mage. Somehow, despite the crew's surroundings, he is impeccably dressed. He sits behind a desk laden with books and scrolls. When he enters, he lets out a world weary sigh. Another arrival, another unfortunate. I am Feral, and I can give you information you can use to settle into life here. Alas, the news is all bad. You can tell me about Avernum? He grimaces. I'm here to help you, even if the help causes great pain. Help me. Well, every day or so, our benevolent overlords above hurl a few more souls into the hellish cesspit. Then they come to me, and I tell them just how bad things are here. He chuckles dryly. Normally, I'd be cheery, but today I'm just not in the mood. Anyway, I'm here to give information. Daryl looks up from behind the desk and grimaces. You want to know more? I will tell you what I can, but learning more about Avernum only leads to despair. You give information. Yes, for example, on our lovely neighbors, the ne Nephilim and the Cesarekai. Or on your chances for escape. Or on how you get supplies. Or on the local politics. The Nephilim you've heard of, there are many of them on the surface. However, until you arrived in Avernum, you had never heard of the Cesarekai. What are our chances of escaping from Avernum? No chance, none whatsoever. We all stay down here until monsters hunt us down like dogs. What are the Cesarekai? Lizard men, only live below ground. Intelligent, powerful fighters. Very magically talented. We've been at war with them for years, and lately things have been at a stalemate. They live to the west. Who runs things down here? Each town has a mayor. The mayors form a council. The council co-rules with King Micah, lord of our homey little pet. Micah lives in the Great Cave. To get there, go away south and a ways west. By the way, the council meets in the castle. A place you should know about. What is the castle? It's our pride and joy. We built a real castle of rocks, crude magic, and spit. King Micah lives there, orchestrating our desperate defenses. You should see it. It's reasonably impressive. It's in the Great Cave to the southwest. Where should I go? I hear you can fight. Avernum needs that to delay the inevitable. There are two settlements near here. Tell me more. Dovno is to the north. It's a farming community ravaged by Nephilim raids. You'd have better luck at Silvar to the west. It's the largest settlement nearby, and the mayor is always looking for warriors. I would go there first, I think, if I was a warrior, which happily I am not. You see a worn and scarred middle-aged man. He has the thin, washed-out look you already associate with many years in Avernum. You hope your time here is kinder to you. He carries a pot of plant and a shovel. He nods to you and sets down the pot for a moment. I'm Dunbar, he says. Welcome. How long have you been down here? Hard to tell. Tough to keep track of years without being able to see the sun. Sometimes they say what year it is, but I don't see why I should believe them. They can't see the sun any more than I can. But a long time? Yes, a long time. Building. Fighting. Tending to my garden. He looks down at a vicious scar on his arm. Like the gardening best. You walk around with Dunbar as he tends to the fort. Sometimes he repairs walls and sometimes he tends to the small fungal gardens. What's your job? I'm the groundskeeper and gardener and fix it man. I like gardening best, but I do what they need. How do the plants grow without sunlight? Not sure, but there's plenty of warmth and wet for them. There's volcanic vents everywhere, see? They make everything smell and they're dangerous, but the warmth keeps us all alive. Tell me about the plants. Well, we bred some pretty weird plants down here. All sorts of mushrooms for food and fodder. Those weird twisted trees give what little wood we have, and so on. Mages make the plants, I grow them. You eat the mushrooms? 
Yes, and not much else. You'll get sick of them before too long, but they're food, and that's what counts. How do trees grow down here? Amazing, aren't they? The roots dig into the rock and the leaves absorb moisture from the air. They get light from the fungus above. I can't figure out how the scrawny things stay alive, but they do. I've never heard of trees like these. That's because they were created down here by the wizards. They live in a tower to the south or something. All the wizards go there. They do all the standard weird stuff with, Simon, with demons and such, but they make plants too. Without them, we'd all be dead. Okay, so they pretty much use magic to survive down here, which which makes perfect sense, right? This is the storeroom where the surface goods the Empire occasionally sends down through the portal are stored before they're distributed throughout Avernum. Understandably, goods from the surface are very valuable down here. Okay, I'm not really going to worry about stealing, honestly. So... Because I think, at least in this first one, you can get... You can get busted. Still. If you steal something and somebody's nearby. But we can take this. Because this is a quest item. We'll hang on to that. Actually, we will need iron bars for a quest, so let's go ahead and take that. Remember, if your crime is seen, don't steal anymore. So make sure you only take... Uh, when an NBC isn't seeing, seeing you at all. In the later Vernum games, both uh, the sequel and the sequel after that, you can still steal if somebody's not around, but the game will block you. If you try to steal while someone's visible, so you don't act, so you can't accidentally steal anymore, which is actually a good thing because getting busted very easily is very annoying. You meet a powerfully built woman. She wears chainmail with the sun insignia painted on the chest. It is faded and chipped, but still visible. Her reddish cheeks contrast strongly with the paleness of the rest of her skin. He sizes you up and nods slightly. Heard you've been fighting from the moment you got here. You didn't just curl up and die. I approve. He shakes your hand. I am, I'm Acacia. What is that design on your armor? You point out the insignia. It's a crude drawing of the sun. This is our symbol, the seal of Avernum. It reminds us of where we came for and where we hope to return to. Are you a soldier here? Yes, I'm the guard captain for the barracks here at Fort Avernum. We got a bunch of good men here, and when the Nephilim come for us, we'll give them a good run. We work best on defense. Why are the Nephilim attacking you? They were thrown down here by the Empire, just like us, and they've always hated humans. We haven't attacked anybody. We just want some caves to call our own. Not good enough for our foes. They won't rest until every human is on their dinner plates. Tell me about this fort. It's one of the most important places in the whole underworld. For us, I mean. If the Nephilim take Fort Avernum, a bribing humans fall into their hands. And then... She draws her thumb across her neck and makes a charming noise. Casey, it says, I've got guard duty and, from the look of you, you're ready to go out and look for action. What do you want before I go? Any advice on where I should go? Anywhere. Wherever you go, there will be someone trying to take our land or find, find a tasty human to eat. So most warriors who arrive here head west to Silvar first. The mayor there has a soft spot for new arrivals. Of course, some people want to find a way to escape the underworld. Fools, if you ask me. We had one of them through just a few weeks ago. Tell me more. Well, I met him. Someone tried to use one of those strange blue crystals to make a portal to the surface. It was a mad idea, and it wouldn't work. We made the fool leave before he gave any of the new exiles ideas. What was his name? Oh, I can't remember. He said he was heading up to Formello, though. They're welcome to him. People who trifle with unknown magics are dangerous to everyone around them. What strange blue crystals? When the first people arrived in Avernum, they found a few of these bizarre crystals. 
When you looked into them, they talked to you, spoke in your mind. Most of them are lost, but there are still a few around if you look hard. Some of them even teach in interesting things, but well, they don't drive you mad. You see a quiet, frail woman. She is picking mushrooms. They are big, bloated brown things, different from any such fu fungus you ever saw on the surface. When she notices that you are watching her, she blushes and stares into her basket. Greetings, she says in a quiet voice. I am Diane. Uh, what do you do here? I came with Tor, my husband. Now that I am here, I help as best I can by cooking main mainly. I have met Tor. He gave me some supplies. Ah, uh, yes, your rival allotment. We all got it when we came down here. Otherwise, everyone who arrived in a Burnham would be poor and desperate. Then they'd rob people and end up in the Abyss. What is the Abyss? It's far to the west of here. It's where we send the criminals. Not everyone the Empire sends down is kind or sane. Those who can't live with us in peace are sent to the Abyss to live apart. Why would it make us... Why would it make a Burnham as bad as the Empire if they're just... Uh... Exxon criminals to their own part of the caves. I mean, that is more than fair. You don't want to live among people like that. That seems reasonable. Indeed. When the Empire sends murderers down to live with us, we have little other choice, and I completely agree. Uh, those are big mushrooms, aren't they? Lovely things, so the taste is bitter. They are most of what we eat down here and drink what we feed our livestock. They don't grow on the surface. No, the Wizards of the Tower of Magi created them, using ordinary mushrooms and powerful magic. We depend on them. Without them, we could not live down here. Diane is still picking mushrooms. She smiles shyly at you. Uh, you're the cook? Well, a couple times a week I cook meals for everyone here. I'm actually a very good mu musician, and I sing, but there's not much call for that around the port. Oh, well, we won't be here forever. Could you sing something for me? He sings a song for you, which you've never heard before. It is long and sad, about life in caves and missing the sun above. He has a beautiful voice. Let's go ahead and pick this up since it is a quest item. Again, I think that guard's too visible, so I'm not going to steal anything. Ah, that guard's blocking me. I meant to go. You do want to explore all the towns you can, by the way, so that's why I'm not just heading out, even though I know I can. These cows have only just arrived from the surface, sent through the same portal that delivered you. They look quite displeased with their new surroundings and fodder. You wonder why the Empire is supplying a Burnham with fresh livestock. Perhaps these were bad cows, naughty and rebellious, and Emperor Hawthorne's bovine agents punished their disloyalty with the eternal exile. Okay, no one's in range, so that's why we'll take a couple items here. I like to give my scrolls to my spellcasters for situations where they're low on spell energy.
I'm also going to go ahead and equip these robes on them since it weighs a little bit less than the... the leather armor and there and I do want them to be able to carry drone missiles as well. There is a spell book chained to this pedestal. The name of the owner is carefully inscribed on the spine. Feral's Knowledge Compendium. It's very implied to look at a major spell book, but if you took a peek inside this one, it probably wouldn't hurt. Unless, of course, it was trapped. Most of the contents are very basic. No help to you. There is, however, a description of a powerful, ancient holy rite. It's rather out of place in this book. It's very interesting reading, though. You can improve your knowledge of the spell Call Storm here. You concentrate and try to memorize it. Your group's total arcane lore skill needs to be at least seven to learn the spell. Unfortunately, you weren't able to understand it. So that is an instance where we're going to have to come back. We got some iron javelins here. Now, throwing missiles are pretty... pretty sparse, so you do want to carry as much of them as you can. But the Iron Javelins do a lot of damage. Or a fair amount of damage, I should say. You meet a middle-aged woman who seems to be in a big hurry. Like everyone else you've met, she is extremely pale. She is holding a crew clipboard. She nods to you. Greetings, I'm Janice. Don't come to me for supplies. I discount them. I don't give them out. What are you doing? I'm in charge of supplies for the fort. The soldiers, they do their own cooking, but I'm the one they come to for the food, and weapons, and clothes. It's tedious work, but it keeps me busy as long as Cyril is stationed out here. Tell me about the soldiers? Yes, good lads and lasses, everyone. Well, most everyone, anyway. Just between you and me, the best get sent to the front. The front? To the north, where all the Nephilim are, and to, to the west, to fight the Sisericae. Aburnum is a land of constant warfare. I doubt Andrew told you that when you arrived. He didn't want you to succumb to despair. Not right away, anyway. Janice continues to make her way among the piles of crates, taking an inventory of the supplies freshly arrived from the surface. Where do these supplies come from? The Empire. They send down things we need to survive from time to time. Livestock, food, alchemical supplies. They arrive in the caves below along with the people, and we send carts down to haul them out. Why does the Empire give us things? It is a mystery. Maybe a few officials on the surface have actual honor, and they don't want us to die. Or, more likely, it, it is a reward for something Avernum does for them. What might that be? I, I don't know. Nobody tells me. She taps her clipboard nervously with a chip fingernail, eager, eager to return to work. Like I said, we don't really need bread, so we're just going to go ahead and put that in there, and we'll put this in our... You meet a young woman with long, black hair. She is sitting at a table, eating a bowl of thin lizard soup. Her skin has not yet attained the paleness of one who has spent a lot of time in a vernum. When you get close, her, he her head jerks up. Once she has seen who you are, she returns to her soup. Disappointed. Have a seat, fellow exile. I'm Warwick. We might as well regain our strength before we go out into the wilds. Have you arrived recently at Fort Vernum? No, I have been here for weeks, asking people if they have heard of the one who was sent down before me. Her name was Anastasia. She was sent here a few years ago, and I don't want to leave until I know where she is. I haven't met anyone named Anastasia, but I'll remember that you're looking for her. Thank you. I would appreciate that. Despondent, she turns back to her soup. You step out of Fort Avernum and get your first good look at your new home. You are at the east end of an enormous cavern many miles across. 
in the dim green light you can look out through the mist and see a huge forest of the strange fungal trees a dark river flows by to the south and to the west you can dimly make out the lights of a town although you're far underground it's not as quiet and peaceful as you thought it would be sounds echo well in this cavern you can dimly make out the hisses of blizzards flowing water and unnervingly the growls of distant humanoids your journey into avernum is about to begin okay oh before we actually step onto the purple before we step out onto the purple area we are going to explore the outside of florida burn real quick the purple shading by the way is where you exit the town so as soon as we step onto that we'll be outside Using blessings. If you run into trouble in combat, be sure to use blessings. The mace fell haste, and the priest fell's war blessing and protection will make you more effective in combat. Later, your mage and the priest will be able to create wars and cloaks. Magical shields that aid your entire group. Okay, so... <laughs> Again, my frontline fire is not going to be doing much damage quite yet since we don't have a spear for him yet, but we'll get there. We'll get there. But yes, the spell book right here, we're going to have to come back to. We get a high, higher arcane lore. Here we are outside. The sign says Dovno, 8 miles north, Silvar, 7 miles west. All distances subject to being changed by cave quakes. You enter one of Avernum's cities. Well, they would call it a city. By Empire standards, it's a miserable collection of crumbling stone hovels perched on the shore of a black, icy river. The dim green glow from the luminescent moss above gives everything an eerie look. As you enter, one of the guards mutters, Welcome to Silvar, newcomer. Strangers are welcome here if they watch themselves. They wave you by. Sign says Anastasia's armor. Behind the counter, there is a middle-aged woman wearing a thick leather jerkin. A pair of suits of armor are displayed behind her. On the surface, they would be thrown into the trash. Down here, they are almost priceless. Be nods to you. A customer? Then welcome to you. I am Anastasia, and this is my shop. We buy and sell here. I met someone named Warwick. She's looking for you. She's in the Port of Vernum. Really? My, my sister is down here? That is terrible. I was hoping she would be able to evade the Empire's bastards. Thank you for letting me know. If you see her again, please tell her that I will have her brought here as soon as possible. Well, why don't we go ahead and do that right now? After all, we did get a quest to find Anastasia. And she's really not far at all, just like a town off. Warwick is still sitting at the table, contemplating her suit. What do you want? I have met Anastasia. She is staying in Silvar. Really? Oh, thank you. He stands and embraces you. My sister and I were foolish enough to question the Empire slaying all the Nephilim in our province. We were sent down here, one after the other. I am poor, and there is little I can do for you. However, I will be sure to tell all I meet of the kind travelers who took pity on me in my time of need. Thank you again. So yeah, with that done, we actually got a reputation boost. And you definitely want to complete the quest that will keep your reputation boosted. You can do a couple that will penalize it, but then again, you don't want, want that to happen. You want to keep improving your reputation as much as you can. There is a patrol of Vernite militiamen watching the road between Fort Vernum and Silvar. 
Their weapons and armor are crude and dented, clearly passed down from warrior to warrior for decades. They warn you to watch out for goblins and bandits and then continue their patrol. All right, so with that quest quickly cleared up, that's gonna do it for this part of Let's Play, but I will see you all soon with the next.